Hi, I'm Peter from Coffee Parts and I'm here with Paul Asquith to look at five tips to make your espresso better. Firstly, Paul, thank you for coming in. No worries, it's great to be here. Espresso is your thing. You got a big history in espresso. Do you just want to tell the audience a bit of a 30 second blurb of your coffee story? Yeah, sure. Um, so I've been in coffee for uh, 21 years this year. Um, I started as a barista and uh, like most people, um, you know, pulling shots and, and learning probably back in the heyday of a you know, real manual style of making coffee. coffee. No tools, no tips, just just the real feeling, looking and, uh, and you know, the, the what they call the art of coffee, I guess. This. Um, but uh, then I became a trainer, um, and for, for the most part of my professional career, I've been a trainer for Glory Jeans, uh, for Grinders Coffee, for Honor Coffee, um, for Seven Miles Coffee Roasters, and then uh, more recently, Josie Coffee. Yep, and you've also competed? Yeah, yeah, I've competed um, in barista championships. I've also judged in, in heaps of those championships as well. Um, and still to this day, I'm an active judge for the Australian Specialty Coffee Association. That's awesome. And talking about five tips, when you came in, we're trying to work out your list of five tips and yeah. it's actually quite similar to what I had in mind. And just to preface that these are simple things that can be done for any machine. So we've got a Rocket Apertamento here. Mm. It could be a Gadget Classic or it could be Lama Zocco GS3. Whatever it is, there are five tips that uh, irrelevant of the machine that can make a better espresso at home or in a cafe. Absolutely, you know, you could you could be spending thousands of dollars on a coffee machine. It's not necessarily going to give you great results. Um, very simple tips like this that we're going through today are going to give you great results on a, a plethora of great coffee machines out there. So first things first, coffee storage. Mm. So we've got a fellow here. Could be any brand. It could be a planetary doesn't matter the brand, but it is storing the coffee. So once you buy the coffee, how you store the coffee at home. Do you want to just go into this? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the biggest thing we want to do is keep coffee away from um, extreme temperatures. We also want to keep it away from uh, oxygen. So obviously, you know, for, for, the most, for the most part, don't open a coffee bag until you're absolutely ready. Yep. And buy your coffee in sizes that are manageable, that you're going to use them in a reasonable period of time. But things like this can make it a lot easier because what you can do is pump out the oxygen out of that storage container yep. and store it in a cool, dark place. Yep. Um, that way the coffee is going to stay fresh. Keeping the oxygen away from that coffee is going to extend its life and make sure that you've got fresh coffee throughout the, the whole period. So a reasonable time generally for a home is a week or two? A week or two, yeah. Something like this will definitely extend the life of your coffee yep. um, beyond a couple of weeks, yep. but no more than a month of yep. a, a, from a bag being open. But um, yeah, a week or two is a really safe period of time to bank how much coffee you're going to use at home. Yep. That way that way you're, you, you're, you're buying it on a fresher fresher basis anyway. And in terms of the grinder, normally you want possibly a little bit less than this, but mm. enough coffee that it's pushing down on the chamber so you don't get popcorning, and not too much that you're filling the hop and taking too long to grind through. There is an exception, obviously if you're using a single dose grinder, then it's different, but for the most part, you want just enough in the hopper to put some weight down and not too much that's gonna sit there for too many days. Absolutely. I generally like to say this line across here is a really good level to fill your grinder up to yep. and keep it around about that level because as you say, as it gets a little bit lower, it starts to pop corn, corn. start to have pro some problems with grind consistency. Yeah. Next thing on the list, if scales, now these are the Kaya's, they're yep. quite expensive. It doesn't yep. have to be an expensive scale. It doesn't. More just a scale for consistency. Absolutely. So once you're grinding, knowing that whatever your your basket size and you're going for, if it's 20 grams, it's 20 grams. Absolutely, yeah. Um, as long as the scales get you down to uh, a tenth of a gram, basically yep. so 0.1 of a gram, yep. um, they're going to give you a reasonable consistency at home. Yep. Most roasters these days, particularly specialty roasters, are going to have a recipe. Um, quite often they're written on the bag or yep. they'll give you a card with it on there or you can talk to the brister on how they prefer to brew that coffee. 
um, and you will have a, a certain amount of coffee in yep. and also a certain amount of coffee yeah. out. So um, a nice set of scales like the Arcaeus here allow you to put the group handle on top and weigh the coffee in. Yep. And then if you've got the Arcaeus here, the smaller set yep. underneath your, your spouts, you're able to weigh the coffee yep. out. Um, those two things are going to give you more of that consistency than you could ever imagine. And yep. these two are, are big, big game changes in your quality of coffee at home. Yeah, so from a home perspective, weighing is a little bit easy because you can probably use a kitchen scale or any kind of scale. Mm -hmm. Weighing out does get a little bit harder. They have to be a bit smaller and waterproof and stuff like that. But weighing in, definitely making sure that you're always dosing the same because otherwise Absolutely. you get one shot that's a bit different the next shot you can't work it out you think it's an adjustment on the exactly time. yeah so weighing in consistently and when roasters are giving you they tend to give you ratios so two to one but some roasters will say 20 grams in 40 grams out mm. but that depends on your basket size so normally it might be a ratio so if it's 16 grams on a two to one it'll be 32 out or whatever that might be mm. the next thing we're going to look at is wdt yep. yeah so so the thing with a lot of grinders, and this, this goes with even the, some of the high-end commercial grinders, is you will get static clumping. And that is, as the coffee comes out, you'll see chunks of coffee that almost look like big boulders yep. as they land into the basket. Now, they can cause water to not flow through your coffee properly. No matter what you do to that coffee um, in tamping or distribution, those things are not going to stop that water channeling around those clumps. So something like the WTDT tool here with sharp little spikes allows you to stir in the basket and break up those little clumps. And that allows for a much safer bed of coffee yep. so that when the water travels through, it travels through really nice and evenly. Um, there are different ways you can do that, but if you can manage those clumps yep. in that basket, you're going to get much better extraction. And once again, this is a nice tool, but even at an elementary level, if you got a teaspoon and flipped it around and used a teaspoon just to yep. break it down a bit, yep. like you don't necessarily have to be buying these tools, just the concept of Not breaking it yeah. down. And it, generally speaking, the, the cheaper the grind, the, the more clumpiness you're gonna get. Absolutely. So having a tool like this or using anything to break it down does help. Better grinders like the XL here, the Eureka XL, are going to do a better job, but having that tool just helps that little bit extra. Absolutely, yeah. Next thing we're going to look at is distribution. Mm. So in this case, we've got the NCD, but there's a whole bunch of them on the market. Absolutely. So following on from breaking clumps, you still do need to make sure that the density of the coffee around the basket is relatively even. Yep. You can do that by giving a bit of a tap with your wrists. Yep. Um, you can go as far as to use a tool like this that spreads the coffee around and attempts to kind of distribute it a little bit more evenly around the basket yep. and get e even density around that basket. So when you do go to tamp the coffee, um, you know that the coffee is relatively similar all through the basket and the water's not going to favor one side of the handle or, or, or not, yeah. And that comes into the fifth thing, which is tamping. Tamping. And yeah. not all tampers are created equal. Having a tamper is a really good start. And then within tampers, having the appropriate tamper size-wise to the basket, but also how sharp they are around the edge means how close they can go to the edge. The sharper they are, also the easier they damage. So there is a, a bit of a, mm. a fine line, but the sharper ones, in this case, the Pullman Big Set, where you're really going all the way to the edge, you're going to get a more even tamp and distribution. And that's obviously someone at home might only have a plastic tamp, which, yeah. which might be better than not having one. Yeah. But going to a stainless tamp and then going to a tamper that's, in the case of for a rocket here, 58.3, and having it on proper baskets will make a difference. Yeah, absolutely. And as you said, I think you said 58.3 just yep. then, um, you know, every basket's going to be created differently. Yep. But uh, just having a 58 mil tamp will allow yep. you get to get to the edge to a certain extent. Yep. That extra 0.2 or 0.3. 0.5 in the point, Sargo, Yeah, absolutely. Um, allows you to get right to the edge and collect all of the coffee cool. that you're tamping down and leaving no, no particular edges around the outside. And it really does, does help. The other thing, I a temp won't do for you, yeah. but something you really need to concentrate on 
is keeping it level. level. You yeah. know? So often you see people um, not concentrating on the tamp and uh, they've, they've got a bit of a level. Yeah. And you just gotta remember water's lazy. Water's yeah. going to find the path of less resistance. So if there's a hill, if there's a change in density, if there's holes through because we haven't broken up those clumps, water is going to travel through those areas first. So having uh, these, these three things here are going to really hold that consistency and make sure your espresso is always good. Should we do one quick espresso? Absolutely. Using these tools? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. First things first, let's just bring that to zero and grind out hopefully 20 grams. Spot on. Spot on. 20. <laughs> All right, so obviously you're going to get your coffee in over the top of the basket. The WT2 tool does take a little bit to, of getting used to, but you kind of want to swirl it around here without losing too much of your coffee. Um, you can get little rings that go around the outside to, to stop the coffee from going over the edges as well. But you're basically just working it, breaking up all of the clumps in there. Then, you want to distribute. Now, as I said, you can use your hand to kind of distribute it around the basket. We do have a distribution tool here that you can just turn, create that even density in your in your uh, basket there. And then yeah. we're ready to go with the tamp. Yeah. So tamp over the top. Now I always say to people in training, if you're new to tamping, lift it up and have a little bit of a look at eye level. Um, you can actually even see here, yep. uh, I'm normal, normally used to tamping from well over above yep. the basket. There's a little bit of a slight rise here, so I do need to adjust that just a little bit yep. to bring it nice and flat. So then we've got this nice flat prepared biscuit here that there's no clumps, yep. uh, no chance for channeling nice and even, obviously the right amount of coffee. So the last thing we need to do is make sure we extract the right amount of coffee coming out of the coffee machine. Yeah, I'm just gonna give it a quick little purge. Just cause it's been sitting there just to neutralize that temperature. Absolutely. So bonus quick tip is when you're not using the coffee machine, to always keep the portafils on the machine so it's the same temperature. Mm. And the cups that you're gonna use to keep on top, just so that the same temperature, you're not getting some temperature loss across both on the porter filter and the cup, because that really brings down the temperature to quite low and that it's a different result than you want. Absolutely, could almost be tip number six, but make sure you turn the yeah. coffee machine on well in advance of when yep. you actually want to have an espresso because these elements do take a little time. bit of time to warm up. Okay, so we'll lock it in, bring up our scales, get our cups. Okay. Tear them off and away we go. And then our target is 40 grams out because we have the 20 grams in. So you just keep an eye on the scales. Now generally it takes a little bit of time to uh, practice getting the right target out. You do need to turn it off just a little bit before the target. I find about 36 is a good number and it'll drip out to around about 40. And you can actually see um, through that flow of the extraction too, yep. that we did a pretty good job of distributing that coffee really well. Um, you will see uh, incorrect flow yep. when you don't do some of these things. You'll see a little bit of clear water first before you see that nice rich color of the espresso. You'll see lots of wavy espresso. Um, there'll be certain signs that you haven't distributed, that you haven't, uh, gotten rid of all of the clumps in yeah. that coffee. Yeah, and you it's like kicking in very early. Absolutely. Thank you. Pop that out. So if we're looking at the espresso, we can see just nice, even color yeah. of that uh, crema. You know, not too much modeling or anything like that. Nice, homogenous color. And we can see that it's obviously pretty pretty well extracted too, yeah. because there's no holes in the crema. Yep. It looks like a really nice coffee. Let's try. It is. It is. Tools made it's a good. difference. Yeah, absolutely. Now, lastly, you can actually have a look at the cake here. 
And if you see massive holes in there, yep. um, that is a sign of channeling. Now, the little mark here is just from the shower screen. That's not one to worry yeah. about. But if there's big pits, big holes around the Especially outside around there, the edges. Um, then you know that you haven't distributed the coffee, haven't yeah. tamped it, those sort of things. And that's where that water has traveled through the coffee. Mm -hmm. So you can actually see here that we've done a really good job yeah. of, of distributing that coffee, making sure it's clump free. And if you want to see more tips, Paul's going to be doing more videos with us. So leave it in the comments below what you'd like to see. And like always, if this video has brought you value, hit that thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. See you in the next video.